Hi, I'm Hannah Cook, and I'm a Senior Innovation Executive at Blue Yonder. And today I have the pleasure of talking you through our Clickscape technology and everything we've learned on our innovation journey of creating a new innovation. So I wanted to bring it firstly back to in the moment and what being in the moment means and why it's so important. After all, Clickscape is our in the moment research tool um, and this is how it was born. So when we look at the definition of being in the moment, it means to be fully focused on or mentally involved in what one is doing or experiencing. And you can see straight away how this is typically difficult to measure because someone's fully focused on that task. Um, it's, it's very hard to get into that moment with them. But what we do know that the majority of these experiences happen out there in the real world. So whether you're in the shops, watching TV, in the office, cooking, cleaning, washing, whatever that might be, that's where these moments are happening, people. Um, and we know that a moment is a really pure form of interaction with, with your product or brand. It's, it's really where the most valuable insights coming from. And after all, the whole experience is a, just a summation of all these moments that you have. So that's why getting into the moment is so important with consumers and, and a really valuable form of insight. We know that human memory is notoriously quite unreliable. So we want to get as close to an event as possible and really get into the moment with them to, for accurate insight. So what we wanted to do was find a way to bring our clients closer to the moment than ever before. And, and clients wanted that too. We were getting asked, how, how do I learn more about being in the moment than moments my consumers have with my products? And this is the first lesson really I've learned throughout the innovation journey is how critical timing is. So with innovations, you really don't want to be late to the game. Of course, you never want to be late with anything, but you also likewise don't want to be too early. If you're too early, the world's almost not ready. They're not ready for this way of thinking. So this is something we've, we've really bared in mind with Clickscape as, as we've been on the innovation journey to make sure that the time is right um, to talk about in the moment. But we wanted to set ourselves a challenge and to see what we could do to get more in the moment. And when we conducted our research, we found that there was a lot of gaps. So there was nothing really that could capture in the moment without lacking um, validity or, or being quite effortful for consumers. We know that neuroscience tools are awesome and they can capture the emotion in system one, but they, they rarely happen in the real world. They're usually in a lab and, and rarely are they scalable. Diary apps are used a lot in the field and probably the answer to in the moment at the time, but they're really effortful. So really they can't capture that instinctive nature of a moment. By the time you've gone into your pocket or your bag, found your phone, found the app, logged into the app, the moment's passed, it's, it's already gone. So, so you're not actually measuring the moment. Obviously qual and quant have a place, um, but they're, they're, they're often post rationalized so after the moment's happened. And, and there's also issues with sort of wristband and pulse breaks like biometrics, um, and, and, and likewise with social media and, and listening, there's, there's usually strong biases. So we, we could see we weren't happy with, with the answer for in the moment research at the time. So we wanted to create one. But this is another really, really valuable lesson when we're talking about innovation, and that's to do your own research before embarking on something new. You don't want to make something that already exists, there's already an answer for. There'd be a lot of work for not a lot of reward. So, so there wasn't anything out there that we were happy with So for, for true in the moment research. And so we hit the lab. So this is Jonathan, our founder and CIO, creating the very first Clickscape, so probably about three years ago now. Um, and a really important actually lesson here that I've learned is practicality is very important over style. So you can see on the top left, the Clickscape button here is white. And we loved it, we thought it was beautiful, really sleek and slick, but it got really dirty really, really quickly when we put it into the hands of consumers in the real world. So it didn't look so beautiful when it used to come back. So we swiftly changed to a black button. So that's another nice little lesson to remember there. But this is Clickscape and, and, and what Clickscape is. So essentially, it's very, very simple. It's almost so simple you'd have thought it would have been done before, but it hadn't. So it's simply a button that you wear either on your wrist or, or clip onto your clothes um, that you click. You can click it once for one measure and then twice for another measure. And that, that task can be whatever you want it to be. So it's completely task agnostic. So all the, the, the consumers need to do is, is click in accordance to the assigned task. 
And that is really the beauty of Clickscape and why it works is because it's so, so simple for consumers. It doesn't take much time to click so we can really capture them moments. And how it works is it connects via Bluetooth to an app on your phone. And this app sort of collects the data and, and sends it off to our dashboard that houses all of our data. So what we've, great, we have the technology, we made it, we've got the systems, the app and the dashboard in place, um, but we wanted to make sure it did what we set out to do. And this is another lesson throughout the innovation journey. So once you've created your innovation, you need to make sure that it sets out, it meets what you set out to achieve. So we actually found that Clickscape captured 15 times more sensitive feedback than the diary apps we just discussed. Um, so we knew that we had created an innovation that measured moments at just the quick click of a button and we were getting that feedback. So any sensorial, emotional, behavioral feedback, we were getting it as it was happening in the real world. So we knew that we, we had something and we needed to make sure that it resonated with people and it worked for them because after all, they are the people who are using it. And at first, quite frankly, it did not. And we're quite honest with that and say that. You can see from these instructions here, um, they're, they're very long. They've got screenshots of exactly where to click on the app to get it to work, what to press. Don't press this, but make sure you press that. Um, so it was a pretty clunky app. Um, we had some, some, some challenges, obviously, with technology. Working with Bluetooth is never easy. I'm, I'm sure you all heard how difficult the government found it creating the NHS Track and Trace app. And this is technology that, that we had been dealing with not, not long before. So at this point, when Clickscape was born, it was very much a market research tool, but we weren't satisfied with that. We, so what we did was we invested really heavily in, in both funding and time to enhance the user experience behind Clickscape. So we'd proven the principle that, that Clickscape worked, there was client demand in the moment was really a thing, but what we needed to do was make it easier for people. So we created a brand new app. And that's been a really big part of my role, um, leading the optimization of, of the user experience and the app design to make sure that our technology was staying true to our core values of, of sort of making it simple for people. But we could have really easily stopped there and, and carried on with the technology that we'd made that did work, um, albeit in a clunky way, but it worked. Uh, and, and there was, like I say, clients were, were really happy with the data they were getting. But we needed, knew we needed to do more to make participation easier, which is arguably the most important part of the puzzle. So the big lesson here is in patience and determination. It's taken us nearly three years to get to here where we are now. One page of email instructions that just got sent to a consumer doing a Clickscape test, which mainly just explains what it is, how to download it, how to log in, and then where to come to if they did need any help with any questions. So everything's now in one place for consumers. It's a much more seamless experience, very intuitive, and we get really good feedback now from it. But that's the lesson here is patience, because innovation is an iterative process. You don't just make something and that's it, you stop. You should always be striving to do better and improve and optimize. And we're still working on optimizing the app now, but that's never going to stop. Uh, I'm sure we're going to have more challenges and optimizations to come in the near future, but that's a really important lesson to bear in mind throughout any innovations you go on. But all of this work really, really brought us forward. Um, and this data has been gathered, gathered in the past sort of 12 to 18 months, and it just shows how valued the Clickscape methodology is with our consumers as well. And they're the people actually doing it and actually using it, which is something we often tend to forget about, but is so, so important. And this is my biggest lesson here throughout the Clickscape journey that I've learned is listen. Listen to people who are using your innovations and your technology and taking part in your research. Without the people, we, we're, we're nothing. We couldn't do our job. And it's so important to make sure we're listening to them. So I've spent many, many hours working with our consumers, doing sort of some user research to make sure what they need in the app is there. So we've now got a tutorial in the app and everything sort of certain FAQs and everything links up really nicely. And we're really, really proud of these figures and, and, and the feedback that we get from consumers. So you can see overwhelmingly people are enjoying taking part in Clickscape. They find it better than traditional research methods. The button and the app are easy to use and they'd, they'd happily take part in another in another Clickscape study if asked. So, so that's my, my biggest lesson here is keeping the end user people at the heart of the research process when designing a new tool for research. 
and, and not to design something that doesn't work for people. This feedback is so, so important to make sure you're gathering it. But Clickscape was always designed with people in mind, and that's why it works. We've talked about the simplicity. So it's not only technology that's being created to fill a genuine need of understanding and getting into the moment with people, but it's also the only tool that consumers can do this and communicate these moments without being interrupted in their day-to-day -day life. So we, we were often asked by, by clients when, when we're doing research tests, like, oh, if they're clicking, can we send them a notification? Can we ring them? Can we find out a bit more about how they're feeling in that moment when they're clicking? And we're really, really adamant that we don't. Um, so we know that that would influence people's behavior. So if you start to interrupt people's days when they're clicking, they'll, they'll soon learn not to click so they won't get pestered. And that's something that we've held true since the very creation of Clickscape. And that's a really valuable lesson in itself, particularly as us for researchers, young researchers, is to stay true to these values of your brand and products that you set out. And this quote here just summarizes things really well. So a consumer saying that they really enjoyed having something to respond with in the moment, rather than having to remember things and fill out a questionnaire at the end of the day. So it's really nice to even hear it from what you may call naive people, the consumers themselves, that they, they appreciate the value and struggles of having to remember and record moments at the end of a day. Um, it's much more simpler and more, um, more enjoyable to record moments there and then as they're happening. So what we have learned to do is something called click views. So click views are short, semi-structured, qualitative interviews that we do at the end of a clickscape test. So after all the clicking is done, so we're not influencing that behavior as we talked about. And they're really important. So they, they kind of bring the data to life. We get some really great insights here. So we work with people, we replay their Clickscape data back to them to really understand the contents of their response and, and what was happening in that moment. So really layering that rich insight of, of sort of qualitative feedback and consumers respond really, really well to seeing their data back, played back to them. It really helps them recall what was going on in that moment, sort of what were they doing when they were clicking and, and, and so on. So that's something that we've, we've learned to do. And that's another really big lesson I would say is using technology for the right reasons. So I, I work in innovation, so I have a big responsibility to make sure I'm not just using technology for the sake of things. To innovate is to, to make something better. To, to improve and to have impact. So we really need to be using technology for the right reasons. As great as Clickscape is, and as much as we love it, we know that it can't answer everything. So it's, it's really important with any technology and methodology to use it for the right reasons where it genuinely adds value. And we play a really important role in that as researchers in advising clients when, when certain technologies should be used. And we're really transparent about when Clickscape um, should be used and, and when it shouldn't, so what it can and can't do. So we are in a really great place now with Clickscape. As you've seen, we've been, we've been on a journey the past two to three years. We've, we've come on leaps and bounds with lots of processes and user experiences. And throughout the journey, we've been able to learn a lot about people and their lives. So I wanted to showcase some of the data that we found and, and just show what value it can add to research. So here was one of our first pilot studies with IFF. Um, and it is measure, measuring real world frequency. So you can see here, what we had was we had a range of products and um, we're specifically gonna focus on Alien, the perfume. And we found that in liking to sort of the traditional quant metrics, it really wasn't performing very well, especially against the other products which were doing well. But in sales, it was performing the best. The, the sales performance was really, really strong, but we just couldn't understand why, why Alien was selling so well when at the liking scores, it was performing poorly. So what we did was conducted a research, um, a Clickscape study, and, and able to, to measure real world frequency. So really measuring the mental availability of that fragrance. And we found that that was actually a better predictor of sales performance. So what was happening was because Alien was being noticed so much in people's days, they were having a lot more interactions with it. That was actually leading into the sales performance. And we found it a very good predictor of, of, of sales. So the really important lesson here as well with any new visualization is finding your so what. So so what does this data mean? So what we've learned with Clickscape is that the so what here is that it was a measure that was never being taken into an account before. So how often people sort of interact and have these moments with a product in their real lives. 
So that and that is actually the metric that's relating to repurchase rather than potentially the the, the traditional liking. And the, the, the data the visualization and finding that so what has been a really important lesson, particularly for me to see as as a young researcher. And we've been really lucky enough to be challenged by our clients and to help really pry out the so what and, and, and adding more value to our data and how we present it. Something else we can also measure with with Clickscape is attitudes. So if you just cast your mind back to June 2020, we're still in lockdown, I think. Um, still a bit of a worrying time. Obviously, coronavirus is quite a new thing. We were sort of in the height of the pandemic still. No such things as vaccines yet. So what we did was we set out our consumers um, on a mission and we were asking them to click whenever they thought about coronavirus and whether that was an anxious or, a, or not an anxious thought. And what we found was really, really interesting. So people were thinking about coronavirus on average 11 times a day. So nearly once every waking hour. And around 50, 54% of them thoughts were actually caused some degree of anxiety. So we were thinking that around five to six times a day, we were actually having anxious thoughts about Clickscape. So the impact of that data is, is, is really valuable and, and no other methodology can, can capture them attitudes and, and such as that. We can also measure human behavior with Clickscape. And another really interesting case study we have is we found that we, as, as people, we think about coffee twice as much as we actually drink it, which is just so, so interesting. And, and we could talk about that on a whole different um, levels, but actually as well, that quarter of these drink occasions where we're having a cup of coffee are actually influenced by advertising. So you see an advert, whether that be physical or digital, and you then are led to have a cup of coffee. So really, really interesting data there. We also have access to sensitive topics with Clickscape. And people have fed back to us that they feel comfortable clicking about private matters such as sex. So sometimes these things are, are difficult to talk about and people really appreciate the value of just being able to click whenever they, they think, feel or act a certain way. So we know that in the industry as well, that men are typically um, a harder group to access. And we found success in engaging men with Clickscape compared to other research methods, which is, is another really interesting find. But what you can see here and what we found was men were thinking about sex on average 18 times a day compared to women who were only thinking about sex nine times a day, so half of that. And the really interesting thought is as the day goes on and these thoughts fluctuate up and down, it's only around mid-morning where the, the two thoughts um, between men and women intersect, so they're thinking about sex on the same um, levels. But interesting lesson here is the element of time. So my final lesson is taking on board new ideas and be willing to adapt. So what we realized with Clickscape was time itself wasn't actually the metric that we should be plotting data against. So we now record time, um, we record it as a wake up time or a start of product application. So this shows us the true performance as, as time passes throughout the day. Um, so we're able to, to, to accurately say that everyone's day starts at the same time. And we've done this here to account for differences in lifestyle. Another really important uh, finding and, and where Clipscape can help is with communications and brand. So we did a, a, a study in the food and beverage industry and found that one in three sustainable messages on pack were not believable. So in fact, so every third message you have on packs about sustainability, whether that's recycling or carbon footprint, we're actually missing the mark and consumers didn't believe them to be true. And there's a whole host of other really interesting research around that and sort of greenwashing, but really, really insightful stuff. So what all this data shows you is the power of moments. And what we've created in Clickscape is the ability to understand any moment anywhere in the real, in the real world. And that means that consumers are able to record their thoughts, feelings, or behaviors at the simple click of a button, which is something they've never ever been able to do before and something that they really enjoy doing. So making things easier and more enjoyable for consumers to communicate to us is really important through our new innovative research methods like Clickscape. And that helps us get better and deeper, richer insights to really bring the market research industry forwards. And our journey of developing Clickscape shows us the vital lessons as researchers and as young researchers about the process of innovation and how to execute new innovations and bring them to life and into the hands of real people in the real world. 
So just to summarise, my top 10 practical tips for innovation are listed here, uh, and we've discussed throughout the whole presentation uh, and the journey that we've been on through Clickscape and everything that I've learned. But if anyone has any questions at all, I would love to hear from you. And thank you so much for listening.